So since we're talking maple this week, I thought it might be good to talk about a maple pest. Um, and fortunately, not like usual. This is something that we don't yet have here. Uh, so not something to be looking to, to expect to see in your woods, but it is something that if you do see it, um, we really want to know about it because we want to stop it in its tracks. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about the Asian longhorn beetle, and hopefully you can you can see that. Okay, let me know if not. We can. Uh, Great. So uh, the Asian longhorn beetle is an invasive insect nearby that we should all be on the lookout for. While this insect hasn't been detected in Kentucky yet, we want it to stay that way. It's on our northern border. There's a small infestation in southern Ohio, but this insect has been repeatedly accidentally introduced from Asia and is a major threat to our forests. In this edition of What's Bugging My Tree, we will look at the Asian longhorn beetle, what it looks like, what it does to trees, and what you can do about it. Uh, so the first thing to kind of think of when it comes to Asian longhorn beetle today, especially for, for talking about maple syrup, is that while it attacks a really wide range of trees, it's especially partial to maples. It also infests many others, including buckeyes, elms, birch, sycamore, and more species. Now, it doesn't really attack conifers, so your pine and spruce are safe, but most of our common trees could be impacted by this insect if it were to arrive, and especially our maples, which we don't want to lose. What does it do to trees? The first things that it's going to do is that the females are going to chew shallow holes on the bark to lay their eggs. And while the adults do a little damage through this, you can kind of see some of that um, uh, damage to the bark as well as some wilting in the foliage from that. Um, it's actually the larvae that really hurt the tree. And so those larvae are gonna hatch and they're gonna tunnel in the tree. Initially, this tunneling stays kind of close to the bark, but as those larvae get larger, they're gonna tunnel deeper into the tree. Here you can see a few photos of what they might look like uh, when they're smaller and then growing bigger. And that bigger part is a problem with Asian longhorn beetle because uh, they get really large and they can disrupt the flow of water and nutrients in the tree and hurt the vascular system of the tree. But also because they're so large, they can actually structurally damage the tree Imagine a tree branch with all of these holes through it or the main trunk, that tree is going to be weakened, have an increased likelihood of branch failure, um, and it'll die with repeated attacks. Uh, so that's what it's doing in the tree, but what would you see if you happen to come across this. The first thing you'd probably notice would actually be symptoms in the tree itself, uh, because those larvae are going to be hidden underneath the bark in the wood of the tree. So the first signs you might see would be a thinning canopy with maybe some wilting, a discoloration, and dead branches. When you see those symptoms, what you aren't seeing is the extensive tunneling that's happening where you can't see it inside of the tree. You might also see, if you look closely at those branches, some holes on the tree. Those are produced because after those larvae develop in the tree and they pupate and they become adults, those adults have to get out of the tree. They don't spend much time in the tree. They chew their way out and they're going to chew their way out and leave this kind of perfectly round, dime-sized hole. Um, they're large and they're noticeable. You could even fit a pencil inside of those holes. And while we do have some other things that can cause that type of damage, especially on um, dead trees, uh, it's distinctive and something to look for. Um, you might also see the kind of uh, cracking and bark impacts that are caused by the egg laying of the female beetles. Um, you might also see what looks like sawdust, the excrement of the beetles around the base of the tree or on those branches, or maybe even sap oozing down the bark. If you imagine all that tunneling happening in the tree, it can definitely impact the tree. Um, now, the beetle itself is really distinctive, and that's been a huge tool in the toolbox for detecting Asian longhorn beetle and stopping it, because we don't have a lot of things that look like this. While we do have some kind of other similar longhorn beetles, this one is really large, 
it's an inch to an inch and a half long. It's black and white polka dotted, which, you know, automatically stands out to me. Uh, these little feet are almost kind of a bluish tint uh, to them. And then they have, as the name implies, longhorn beetle. They have these long antennae that are in this banded black and white striped pattern that I think is really distinctive. And, you know, that stands out, that makes it easy to find them. Um, the larvae in the tree might not be visible while the trees are standing, but their damage is distinctive. Um, and the larvae themselves are going to be pretty large. They can, when they're kind of uh, uh, later in their growth, they can be almost thumb sized with very defined segments and a creamy color and this tiny little head that, in my opinion, looks pretty creepy. Um, but you wouldn't notice this that much because that's going to be living um, inside the tree under the bark, uh, causing that damage. Um, so then what do we do about Asian longhorn beetle? Hopefully we don't see it anytime soon, but once a tree is infested, there aren't many options for saving that tree. In general, uh, trees are removed and then chipped or burned on site to prevent the spread of this insect. Um, insecticides can be used to kill the adults, but unfortunately aren't as effective for the larvae. So you're kind of left with a few options when you have a lot of infested trees, and typically they're taken down and chipped. Um, so really the most important way to manage Asian longhorn beetle is to prevent it from arriving to begin with and eradicating it as soon as possible if it's detected. Um, if you see something that looks like this beetle, report it. Uh, worst case, it's something else and you learn about one of our native lookalikes. Um, but if it is the Asian longhorn beetle, the sooner it's detected, uh, the sooner it can be addressed. And um, once it's detected, the better our chances are of eradicating it completely before it spreads. And here you can see a lot of people taking photos of beetles, but in the past when Asian longhorn beetle has been detected, it's been through, you know, homeowners and landowners reporting seeing this beetle that it's been detected. So once it's detected, state and federal officials will mobilize and send a team of people to eradicate the insect. So these are a series of photos from the uh, Chicago area, um, kind of before uh, these trees were infested with Asian longhorn beetle. Um, they were removed, the trees that were uh, infested or could be potential hosts. And then you can see it afterwards. Now there's a big difference, right? And if you lived on this street, you'd probably probably be pretty sad about the loss of those trees. But this is saving the Asian longhorn beetle from moving elsewhere. And actually, this is an example of a site where they were able to completely eradicate it. Um, and, you know, Asian longhorn beetle is one of the few invasive insects where there have been multiple successful eradications, uh, which really inspires hope for the future. So um, you can see all of these green locations on the map are places where it had been before, but we were able to eradicate it. Um, there are still plenty, however, of active infestations, including this one in Southern Ohio. That's a concern for us in Kentucky. Um, and while we have these existing infestations that are pretty contained, um, new infestations of Asian longhorn beetle have arrived many times directly from Asia on uh, packaging material. Um, and this is just another reason why we need to be really cautious of any untreated um, wood products, uh, as well as not move firewood locally, because it could be really easy to accidentally move um, this or other invasive organisms around on firewood. It's hard to see the larvae uh, when they're really small and inside that wood. Um, uh, Asian longhorn beetle, they're rather large, but there are many different invasive insects and diseases we don't want to get that could be easily moved around that way. Instead, uh, buy local and burn local with firewood. So thanks for joining me today for this tree tidbit and learning a little bit more about the Asian longhorn beetle. We don't want to see this insect anytime soon in Kentucky. So if you do see something that looks suspicious, make sure you report it to your county agent or forester. And um, if you want to learn more, make sure to check out KY Forest Health um, online or in social media.